my name is Ivy Vineo. I'm a digital photographer, have been for several years now in Duluth, and I work at the American Indian Community Housing Organization. Yeah, I'm just kind of disappointed and um, I'm disappointed at COVID, you know, for putting us in this, this spot, you know, where, you know, it's hard for artists to, to do their thing and, and create sometimes. Like for me, I don't want to create right now. Since the pandemic hit, I have felt lost. I don't feel like I have the oomph to go out and get my photos. I have taken pictures with my phone camera and that's still, you know, it's, it's, it's cool. I like to do it, but I really like being with this. Um, and so I look, I look forward to being back with, with Bruce. So. Who's Bruce? Uh, Bruce Willis is the name of my camera. I do name my cameras. This is the third camera that I've had. Yeah, it's so funny. The first time I, I took Bruce to a powwow um, to photograph, I put on Facebook that I was, I was coming to the powwow with Bruce Willis, and you should have seen the messages I got. Oh, you gotta introduce me. I was like, okay, yep, I will, I will. So, I know this is just for show, but Bruce Willis isn't working. Oh, okay, we're good, we're good now, I think. Just needed to get at the, ooh, that's kind of nice. <laughs> the one professional photo shoot that I did do it was about the absence of powwows and how powwow photographers are feeling, doing, creating during this time. The goal of it was to get folks in their regalia wearing face masks. And so I asked them to kiss through the face mask. It's just that one and then the rest are cell phone. So, yeah. But it's okay to take a break too, you know, kind of re-evaluate things and and maybe you know what once it reopens again once we can go out and not have to social distance and wear a mask and all that that good stuff then um, maybe I'll come back with a gusto and, and, and go back to doing what I love. I'm Sarah Brackey as an artist, visual artist, painter, and Sarah Brackey Erickson as an associate professor at the College of St. Scholastica. Yes, yeah, so I have three 20 by 30 paintings uh, that work together as a single image in some ways, but I wouldn't necessarily call them a triptych. And they're called Her Wild Life is Coming Back. I want to say mid-April I started them and then they just kind of grew out of one another. Well you can kind of, maybe you can kind of see I don't know the on the the ends you can see that there's kind of this blue expanse and it kind of leads in to like the central body of the heart. Well during the second piece and the last piece uh, George Floyd was murdered in uh, the cities and having that happen so close to where we are kind of pulled into those paintings. So thinking about how the pandemic itself seems to be, this is totally my own, this is just my thought, I, that it feels like a bubble that's underneath the crust of our society. You can imagine like, because I'm a really visual person, kind of a bubble underneath things that is taking things that were already like cracks and crevices that folks were already experiencing and making them more visible, like making things more evident to a lot of folks, right? And so something that I've been wrestling with with my work is how do I as an individual white lady, you know, of privilege, like also think about how, you know, what, what kind of world or mythos could I imagine that is different than that? That's, I think, what, what art can do. You know, because, you know, art is not essential in the ways that we think about essential, but I do think that art is also essential, you know, for us to, to imagine forward and to live forward, right? So.
Yeah, starting now? Now. Okay. <laughs> so I'm Miri Villiard. I'm a visual artist based in Duluth, Minnesota. And we're here today at the Clayton Jackson McGee Memorial. Behind me is a mural project that I got to help facilitate a couple of weeks back. So yeah, the piece here is obviously the George Floyd um, depiction after you know the murder of George Floyd and, and the protests that were happening here in Duluth. I reached out to the Clayton Jackson McGee Memorial and just offered to bring some plywood, bring some paint, and, and give people space to say whatever they want. Um, yeah. Yeah, so this one, if you see here, there was a young guy who went and added um, Colin Kaepernick, just freestyled it and put that on there, and I was really excited to see, you know, people Taking risks like that, I think, <laughs> if you're not used to doing art. Um, but he just went for it. I guess a lot of my artistic practice is, is doing community-engaged artwork and finding ways to get people who don't you know, usually get that opportunity to paint, to have paintbrushes and to, to do what they want. God, it was really cool to see there was probably like all ages, all ages participated in painting this. Very, very small, like three and four year olds who were taking the time to just do detailed work, um, very thoughtful work. I was really worried that like my, you know, future in painting with large crowds of people was just done. And that was the thing that I was like, I finally found like my niche or niche or, you know, whatever that word is. I found my thing. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, pandemic hits and it's like, you can't do stuff in physical proximity to people. And I'm like, well, that's the only thing that I really thoroughly enjoy. So it was just kind of like, um, having this gave me a little bit of hope because it, it was done in a way where, you know, we provided masks, we provided gloves, we had everybody have like separate brushes. Um, we had volunteers who were distributing the paint, so it wasn't like this shared kind of handling of all, all different materials. Uh, and then the pieces were big enough that it was kind of like, there was enough space, I think, between people and everyone was wearing their masks that it, it, it seemed like there was very low risk um, associated with it. And it kind of opened my eyes to like this process, you know, it, it could be a little bit more tedious, but it's still possible, you know, and it still has the same effect of like at the end, everybody just feeling this sense of ownership over, you know, the created piece of work. first one was on March 20th and it was a chicken. I've had this idea to do something daily for a while and I just never got around to it. So whenever the whole pandemic really kicked in, I said, okay, I'm, this will be the thing that makes me try this and so I started the draw along fun time and it's a daily drawing of just goofy simple things usually less than a minute to do the drawing and then I just put it out there and people can follow along or just laugh at it or whatever. As an artist you think oh, I should draw more I should you know have some discipline with this and I never have and so you know when your entire calendar gets cleared within two or three days. It, um, yeah, that makes a difference. <laughs> this is already going bad. It's not a chicken. Well, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say I went into this saying this is an important thing to do because it'll, you know, get me through this crisis. But I know that when I go back and look through work, I remember the time when I was working on it. And so in five years when I'm going through an old hard drive or looking for files and I find this stuff, it'll be like a little visual marker and reminder of, oh yeah, that was a weird time.
Yeah, so my name is Joe Klander. I work uh, here in Duluth at St. Luke's Hospital, uh, full-time in the ophthalmology department, and uh, part-time artist and a full-time dad. I was thinking about this like a while ago. I had something called Ampersand Island in my head, and I had some characters uh, like Richard Scarry books and uh, you know, all those other little uh, children's books that had all these characters that lived in a world. So I started doing like a painting a day, you know, every day of the pandemic while I was kind of not at work each day full time, so. When you're making illustrations and you're making them at home, there's no place to, for anybody to see them, you know? So I was like, well, how can I get this out into the world and maybe, you know, have some eyes find it and be able to share it with people? So it seemed great to just do it as like a draw along, like Bob Ross, you know, and just put them up on YouTube. I want my first person to live on the island is gonna be my dog. So I'm gonna sketch them up and we will just ink him up a little bit. And then I'll paint him, and then we can see what we come up with. So when you're working and you're doing your daily life, those are all things that give you like a sense of purpose. And all of a sudden when you're not working, you're losing, you're like, you almost feel like you're losing a little bit of value in yourself and what you do. And we had to try to like, find some other purpose around the house instead of just like walking the hallways. <laughs> you know, it's like, all right, well now it's time to make something. You know, this island I was creating with all these dumb characters, like, there's no, like, there's no pandemic on this island. There is, like, this masked guy, like, uh, doing chiropractic work on this raccoon. Um, I don't know, there's foxes uh, karate chopping baguettes in half. Uh, uh, I don't know, yeah, there's this, oh yeah, there's this creepy woman, I don't know. Yeah, like, uh, this monkey that builds robots. Uh, yeah, so it's just, it's all just nonsense. It's all just goofiness. And so it's just an easy way to just have a little bit of escapism. I'm gonna post this up and then I will have another person to come live in Ampersand Island tomorrow. All right, have a good day. Hi, I'm Karen Savage Blue. I'm an artist. I love to paint. My major piece, for the pandemic, it was requested to create a poster that would be distributed into Indian country. So when I did this painting, at the same time that the COVID was happening, I heard this rumor, which may be true. It was on Facebook, so you don't really know if it's true or not. It's Facebook, but the Indian maiden on the Land O'Lakes butter container was going away. Was it the pandemic? Did she, did she get COVID-19? Is that why she's gone? Why did she leave? Are people happy about this? How can they be happy about this? Because I was raised with her. When I'd go get butter for the family, even as a child, there she was in the refrigerated section of the store. And she's very beautiful, the butter maiden. That's what I'll call her, the butter maiden. I looked at the box, at the beautiful landscape. That's what I put at the bottom of my painting and she was no longer there. And then as we go up, I put a bear because in an Ojibwe culture, the bear is like a teacher to help us get through this pandemic. You see this right here? Um, this is a tainted, the tainted landscape. The color's different here. That's, but I made it transparent because this is your pristine, untouched kind of. Well, then this is like spoiled. But yeah. I always get a better understanding of things when I see someone else's work. And you're really grateful that, oh, there's another mind I can use here, you know, to help think this thing through. So I'm excited to see things that I might have missed to help put this into perspective. Because maybe someone knows, like, maybe someone knows, hey, here's what we're gonna do next. Here's what's gonna happen next. 